All right. Just two more. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be my tagline. Yeah, they, they, I'm gonna make that into a gif, and every time they pledge, like, yeah. You All should right. do that. Tony. I should. I should. I should. There you go. <laughs>Hey, what's up? We are back at Between the Waves Music Conference and Festival, btwmadison.com. If you're watching this, you missed it, but you can come next year. Check it out, btwmadison.com. A lot of amazing, fantastic speakers, and we have one of my favorite people <laughs> here today, Chris Godzilla Taylor. What's happening, Ty? How Thanks. you doing? Man, I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great because I'm with you. Yay! This is my guy. <laughs> this is absolutely, this is absolutely, it's funny he's interviewing me. This is my homie. <laughs> <laughs> so for all of the people out there who are not familiar with, with, with Chris Godzilla Taylor, with right. Godzilla, with let Godzilla. us know what you do. I love that shirt, by the way. Oh yeah, the Dano shirt? I, I, I hired him at MMI. I'm the one that hired him. Really? Yeah. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> well, now he's in shirt form right there in front is. of you. I love him. Okay, what I do, what I do, I'm a music producer. I'm a recording engineer primarily these days. I started out as a beat maker at the age of 14. And I started programming drum machines to two-inch tape at the age of 14. Wow. And, um, you know, that's, that's very expensive. Your right. eyes got big, so you know what that is. Well, a couple of sessions on tape found me into a four-track real quick, right? I bet. <laughs> so four-track, six-track, uh, eight-track. I can't afford eight dats. And then I learned, and then I figured out computers could multi-track. I was the first one to do it in Milwaukee down there. Wow. And because of that, when eight dats died, I was the authority on digital. Wow. So okay. that's, that's so where I came from. you were kind of the pioneer <laughs> in the area, and people went to you when that happened. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, every, everybody's a recording engineer until something's broke. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then they come to the guy who knows. <laughs> right, right. And they come right, to right, the guy right, who knows. Right, right. <laughs> well, cool, well, cool. Um, so let's just start it off with a real big question, sure. right? Um, we've heard from some people that it's the worst time to be a musician. We've heard from some people it's the best time to music, be a musician. What, what's your take on that? What do you think? Well, I don't know who would tell. I don't know how this could possibly. This is the best time ever to be a musician. <laughs> How could this not be the? How can this not be the best time ever to be a musician? Hey, some people are uh, are negative Nancys. No, know? no, some people don't understand how much media human beings ingest in a day. I'm sure everybody does about sixty to seventy gigs worth of media a day. Nobody wants repeat media in their timeline, and if they want it, they'll go seek it out or they'll they'll repeat it for it to just stay in their timeline stagnantly. Mm -hmm. They'll just keep thumbing by it. It's no good for them. Everything that you see has to have some kind of sound component. From film and TV to all these little web webisodes that are popping up, there's so many opportunities to have your music placed in something. I mean, oh my goodness! <laughs> Did I tell you that? I guess I mix I mix sound for video game. You know why? Because I'm mixing and it was so much work. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, well, good. I mean, like I'm, I'm I'm glad that you and I are on the same page in terms of it being an awesome time to be a musician. This is you know I'm having a time of my life. You know what? But it's about full time work. Mm -hmm. So often people come into the music industry with a volunteer's work ethic, mm. right? So if you, if, you, if you show up to work full time and give music 40 plus hours a week, 40 plus, not 40, 40 plus, mm. like any business owner would that gets up and goes to work every day, music can pay off for you in a full time capacity. However, if you engage the music business for 20 hours a week or so, mm -hmm. expect to be a part timer and yes, you will need another job. Mm. However, <laughs> if you only go to the studio or write a song once a month, you're a volunteer. You can go sack groceries for people too, and, and, and do that to help. Go work in the kitchen because you're a volunteer. That's what people don't see about the music business. You got to get up and work. Mm. You have to get up and work. And there's no weekend. When the weekend comes, you go to work. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> you go to work, there's no weekend. I'm in the studio all week. The weekend comes, I go to a festival. The weekend comes, I go to a beat battle. The weekend comes, I go to one of my artist's video shoots and make sure that that's going smoothly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a great a lot of people. A lot of people like lose that idea of the work ethic because they think, oh, it's just, you know, it's art. I can create art whenever and blah, oh, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. The, I, I, what artist is, is successful that can't put their work in a gallery? Mm -hmm. What artist is success, successful that can't, go and negotiate someone to sponsor them to create a work that the public can enjoy. Um, that's a job. They have to go out and hustle for that. Mm -hmm. And not only do you have to go hustle for that, you have to be really damn good to get that money. So work at it and be really damn good. Great quote from a great <laughs> man. All right, so we've talked about 
One, we've talked about great things in sure. the in the music industry right now. Let's let me let me have Godzilla take out his magic Godzilla wand okay. and wave it around. Okay. What if you could remove one thing from the music business, whether it be anything in in the live or on the business side or anything? What's one thing that you want to see gone from the music industry that you could just remove right now? Mm. Like 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 fancifully or realistically? Either way. Either way. Realistically, I would love to see someone take an education class before they sign a music contract. Uh huh. I would love to, like, it's mandatory. You need to go do two hours worth of training <laughs> with said situation in said room at the DMV. <laughs> at least about how contracts work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's so many people who don't understand the business. If you and I put in on a record 50 50, mm -hmm. We're partners. However, if I show up with a hundred thousand dollars and you got some talent, you worth ten percent. People don't get that. And the, another thing, if, uh, fancifully, mm -hmm. fancifully, I would love for people to stop putting other people's music down. Mm. Because who the hell are you to tell somebody what their art is or isn't good at or worth? It's not your position. You know, um, that I would like to see that happen. And I also want to see people stop looking at other people in the music industry like they're genies. You can't just go up to somebody and rub them and say, I'm in the game and poke your lip out <laughs> when they don't want to play your song in the club or on the radio. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't built your base up out in the street and got people jamming with you because you out here just slaying them in beat battles and rap battles and all that other stuff and you really putting your best foot forward to be there on social every day, trying to make something happen where people can in be engaged with that mm. 60 or 70 gigs of content they're looking for a day, you have to provide some of that weekly. Mm. Anyway, you know, you can yeah, I feel this like is if short. I, I, I feel like if I went up into the you know anybody in the in the metal industry and started rubbing them like a genie, I'd probably get socked too. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, no. But if you walked up to him and say, "Hi, Mr. Genie, do this for me because I'm good and and and, and everybody tells me I'm great." Yeah. And like people who haven't educated themselves on a the business, their their friends and family geek them up, and when you come and tell them this needs a little bit of work or. Yeah, that's great, but it might take you two or three albums to get to where you want to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People don't realize that all your favorite artists had multiple projects before you heard of them. Those are the projects that were their building blocks to where they're going. So many people put out one or two projects, become discouraged with the result, and don't realize that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. This is a marathon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why Nipsey had the marathon store. <laughs> it's a marathon. And if you can make... Uh, $10 today in the music business, figure out how to make 20 tomorrow. Cause you already know how to make the 10. Figure out where the next 10 comes from. And everybody's not meant to be an artist. Understand that in the music business, I make records, I'm an artist, but I'm a support person too. I'm a mm -hmm. recording engineer, I'm a, I'm a manager, I'm a producer. And in that capacity, I'm here to help other people bring their art to life. And as I do that, it's the most lucrative thing you'll ever find because everybody that I work with is a fan of my work first and a client second. Mm. So as a professional, the people who really say, I like what you do, can you give me some of that? I say unequivocally yes, and they always give me what I'm asking for. Mm -hmm. Those same people with artists, oh, they're not very good at playing the guitar. Oh, they're not very good at rapping. They want me to do a song with them, and I'm like, I don't wanna be on that, that song sucks. Mm -hmm. No. Get on the song and elevate them. Be Michael Jordan. Go on the court and make everyone around you better. They'll pay you not only what you asked for, but they'll come back. And a rising tide raises all ships, right? There it is. Yeah. And if, if you know, I'm going to get my next $10 right now because you, what you should do is sign up for our Patreon, patreon.com slash Swords of Trident. If you like this interview and you want to see the entire uncut interview, check us out, Lords of the Trident. Patreon.com slash Lords of the Trident. Uh, for just a dollar, you get not only Godzilla's full interview, but the full interview of everybody here this entire weekend. That's so dope. I can't, <laughs> wait, I can't wait to share that link. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to share it, because how much game is going to be in that? <laughs> I mean, look, no, you don't, you don't, I was in a beat battle here last night. Yeah, yeah. Which I won, right? You don't understand me, though. When we set it up, mm -hmm. Michael Boddicker came and tuned the system. Dang. For a beat battle. Yeah, yeah. 
Michael Boddicker. Did you did you put rose petals as he walked in? I, he... Yes. <laughs> I, abs- I offered him some smoke. He wouldn't take it though. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he Michael Michael Boddicker is is, is a legendary uh, uh, engineer slash keyboard synth programmer. Synth guy, yeah. Synth just... programmer, but he's a cold engineer too. His ear phenomenal. He did all Michael Jackson synths. Mm-hmm. He came in and tuned the PA for RB battle. Cause that's my guy. How crazy is that? That's crazy. How crazy that's is that? my guy, that's, man. This is oh this is what happens God. here. The game that he 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 did so much to elevate my sound last year. What he was teaching was how they were using synths, and the the end note mattered as much, if not more, than the first note. Hmm. Than the, than the attack, the yeah. sustain and decay. Yeah. They were using the modulations to show that those synths could function like guitars mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and when he started talking to me it was so, putting so many pieces together for me i'm listening to that guy like i love it man yeah yeah he's, so. he's fantastic that's what happens here so if this is yeah. going to be online for that yeah woo. get to btwmadison.com make sure you put that in your calendar sign up for next year you have to be here there's so many amazing people let's say let's say an artist comes up to you and they say godzilla i'm ready man i'm gonna i'm gonna quit my job i'm gonna sell my house I'm gonna break up with my girlfriend, I'm gonna live out of my car, I'm gonna do music full time. What, what is the, the reaction or what is the advice that you give to them? Before that they, that they're ready and they're gonna take the plunge? Yeah, if they say they're ready. And they're gonna take the plunge. Mm-hmm. You go, you, they are ready. If you say you're ready and you're ready to abandon all hope <laughs> of a normal <laughs> ye life. Ye who enter here. Ye who enter here. I don't know if the listeners are not abandoning all hope, ye who enter here. Eh, eh, eh. At that point, if you're going to abandon all hope and really take that job on, I found that when I tell that person, don't do it, you really don't want this life, they do it anyway. Mm. Then they find out they really don't want this life. Mm -hmm. People say to me all the time, man, I want what you have. I want to be in your position, man. I'm trying to get to where you at. And it's like, dog, no, you don't want this. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. It's like, there's no weekends. Sometimes the pay can be crappy. A lot of times I have to do things pro bono because I'm watching things grow and I'm planting seeds to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes you get in business with people that you don't like and you have to execute that contract and complete it so you can get rid of them. Records take much longer to do than like being a sound guy on a movie set does or something like that. So you might be tied to a person that you don't like for six to eight months. Mm. Record, mix, master, and whole album, you know, which is all of the stuff that I do for people. Um, so it, that and being broke, <laughs> you know, I know when you take the plunge, I took the plunge in 2002. Yeah. I, what are we talking about? I did it in 2002. It was 2019. And yeah, I'm, I'm on top. I'm on top at 2019. Mm-hmm. And 17 years later when I took the plunge and I've committed myself 100% to saying, I'm going to make records work and I'm going to make a living in the studio. and I'm not going to go apply for another job. I was working with Cuckoo Cal who had just had in my projects and I was his hype man on tour and I was doing road manager duties for him. And we were all over the country on that. And during what we weren't on tour, we would work in the studio, but I still had a third shift job. Uh, I would work all day, try and get me two hours of sleep at seven or eight o'clock at night. Oh man. And oversleep and pop up at one o'clock and say, oh shit, I gotta get to work. <laughs> <laughs> right? I did that one too many times and I lost my job and it was at Briggs and Stratton. I was setting up diecast machines. I'm like 27 years old, 26, 27 years wow. old, setting up diecast machines for, for $18, $19 an hour. Huh. I was a young, I'm a brand new car, big house. I was, I was living, I lost it all, messing around with Cuckoo Cow. Mm. And when that happened, I said, you know what? I'm not going back to work for nobody else. And I took my last paycheck and I bought some flyers. And I put them flyers in every gas station around me. Mm-hmm. I had a couple people call. That couple people brought a couple other people, and I started earning a living recording people at twenty-five dollars an hour in nineteen in two thousand and two. Wow, two thousand and two, and and, and it's just grown from there. Yeah, I took on a couple jobs when I met you. I was teaching recording in college. Yep. That's the kind of job I wanted to take on. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's I, still, that's still music. It is still, that's music. still music. That's but still in the industry. That, it is. It is. But yeah, and it taught me some really really valuable things. I, it taught me how to navigate the music business mm. like a corporation. Um, so when I look at what our strategic goals are, 
what our budgets are going to be allocated to, mm -hmm. keeping an artist on task because they might have the money and say, I want to go do thing A with this, with thing B might be better for them. Right. Um, those kinds of things are things that I learned out of there. And because of that, I'm able to give all of my clients project sheets. They're all able to get um, templates for album release or single release so that they have a checklist for everything they need to go down from mm -hmm. media base, BDS, sound exchange, you know, uh, you know, uh, PRO registration, copyright. And then here's what we're paying for promo from the DJ crews. Because you, if, you, if you're going to put a record out and you're going to be in urban and you're not going to be like eclectic, like really weird kind of deal, you're going to be poppy. The more mainstream you want to sound, the more money it costs you to promote. Mm. It costs, if you, wanna, if you want Drake's spot, you're going to spend Drake money. <laughs> yeah. That's the truth. But however, if you want Schoolboy Q spot, because mm -hmm. it's a little bit more eclectic. Yeah. Chance. A little bit, it's off the beaten path. It's a little more niche. And yeah. not, not everybody's walking that lane. Right. 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 So when right. I when I embrace spirituality and 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 and, and holistic living, um, it gave my music a different sound. Hmm. And musically, I'm able now to walk in a completely different lane than everyone else. And I won that beat battle last night because I started hearing music in reverse. Hmm. I can hear records forwards and backwards. Like I gotta let you hear what I did with Flash Gordon, Queen. Oh man. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah? Yeah, it's a, it's a monster. I'm excited it's, it's to hear complete, that. It's a complete monster. That's awesome. I used it, I want, the beat battle I lost, I lost the beat battle <laughs> Thursday night to my man 40 Mill in Milwaukee. Mm. Great producer. Mm. I'm going to post that this weekend, and you can hear us beat for beat, and it's one of those in that. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Where, where can people find that if they want to? Godzilla.com. Godzilla.com. <laughs> yeah, G-O-D-X-I-L-L-A.com. All, right. All right. Use the X, not the Z. Right? Yeah, and if you look me up on YouTube, you put Godzilla with an X. They just show you the, the big monster, and then they say, oh, would you like to search for dude? <laughs> next to it, right next to it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. was you really looking for him? Or were you looking for him? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, how, that's how Google handles me. Yeah, that, yeah. that's actually kind of cool, though, because if it's like somebody's searching for Godzilla, and then they type it wrong, and then it's like, oh, wait a minute, who's this guy? That's kind of neat. Well, it, it, that's, a, that's a really good thing to say, actually. Mm -hmm. It takes me to um, something that young artists really don't consider when they're stepping out. Mm-hmm. Um, when you decide to name your band or you decide to name yourself as an artist, go look and see who already is using that name. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. No, in case in point, I'm working with a gentleman named Taurus. Mm -hmm. And he was calling himself something else that I can't even remember what he was calling himself because every time he said it, I was like, huh? Because <laughs> if I can't say your, if you don't say your name to me once and I can't say it back to you, you failed. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a brand. Yeah. That brand just failed. If you can't say... Godzilla, oh Godzilla! Most most of the time, people try to figure out why they call me that. Because mm -hmm. I used to be a pro wrestler, and my arch enemy's name was King Kong Cologne. I did not know that about you. Right. Really? Yes. That's amazing. Entirely, <laughs> entirely. That's that's what happened. Wow. And um, so so yeah so 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 think about and research this Taurus that I'm working with. He's a really nice guy. There are fifty Tauruses. Mm -hmm. Fifty people, artists. Well, not only that, if you Google Taurus, you're going to get horoscopes. No, I'm talking about just looking at Spotify. Oh, okay. okay. And just in Spotify. Just in Spotify. Just in Spotify. So what we had to do is we had to modify his name to Chi-Town Taurus. Mm. But what he's going to do is he's going to lose a lot of fans from his first project. Because anybody who has found that record under the name Taurus will not be served Chi-Town Taurus mm. when they're looking for it. We have to, we have to now go on a branding campaign to educate people that this name has changed. So what I've been doing on his videos for this current project is putting his name as Chi-Town Taurus in there, even though it's on Spotify. Yeah. Because I know the next album is going to be under that name. Sure, sure. Because it's just impossible to search for him. Hmm. So do your research on what you... And that's not the first time I've seen that either. Mm -hmm. do, you, do your research on what people are calling themselves before you name your... <laughs> Your band or something. Not just, I mean, not not just in the hip hop world too. I mean, like I've seen that in bands everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I definitely oh, wasn't just God. speaking of hip hop there. I definitely yeah. was not just speaking oh, of hip hop geez. there. We're gonna name our band Executioner. I'm pretty sure that's taken. Like, <laughs> come on, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> hey, no, no, you don't know how many people have showed up and wanted to be Godzilla. Right, right. And then they actually look, and when they when they say I'm Godzilla, and they go look and say, oh, well, damn, <laughs> crap. Okay, no. No, it can't be Godzilla. It's already him. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, KRS-One, Naughty by Nature, well, Tretch. 
you know, and all these other legends that I done threw down with. I'm um, working with Big Mike. We're going to shoot a video down in Houston in a couple weeks. Like, all of those situations are, you know, the kinds of things that you'll run into when you find my name. And it's when you build your brand. And the most important thing people can do, release content. Mm. I know so many people. Release like, content, you say, he said, looking into the camera knowingly. <laughs> release content? <laughs> that's, that's the lifeblood. That is your lifeblood as an artist. You'll never make no money if nobody ever hears it. So many people make records and it just sits at home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's not like, okay, I don't have $10,000 to promote up to promote your record. Okay, fine. Still put it out. Yeah. Somebody can hear it. You can share it with your friends. Maybe somebody will fall into it. But that's one record. Okay, and now if you're sitting around waiting on that record to be great, you're missing an opportunity to share a new record with the person you shared the old record with. People are so busy sometimes trying to work a new record that they miss the fact that your fans need new content because they want to have a reason to talk about you lest someone else take your spot. That's a very good point. So hey, if you want content on the regular, patreon.com slash swords of the trident, we release all sorts of crap. Go there, pledge a buck, get everything. All right, just two more. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be my tagline, you know. They, they, I'm gonna make that into a gif, and every time they pledge, like, yeah. You All should right. do that. I should, I should, I should. There you go. <laughs> All right, well, Godzilla, let us know one more time where we can find you online. Give us all the links. Let Godzilla. us know. Godzilla.com. It's Godzilla.com. You can find me, Godzilla414. G O D X I L L A 414. I have a fan page on, Twi on Facebook, Chris Godzilla Taylor. But on uh, Twitter and Instagram, I'm much more active. Facebook is outgoing only. Um, I really got off of the box, if you will. Mm -hmm. I got off the box completely, and I post for marketing purposes and for work, and I don't really read what other people put up. Gotcha. I, I, I just can't stomach it anymore. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Yeah, A lot so. of people can. Yeah. Guys, I love you, man. You're fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much for sitting Thank down with me. Thank you for having me, me man. Um, hey, if you want to hear the entire uncut interview, go to patreon.com slash swords of the trident. Pledge just a buck. You'll not only get Godzilla, but you get everybody else this entire weekend. And check out Between the Waves, Madison. It is an amazing conference. I'm going to go buy it. I'm yep. going to go buy it. I promise. <laughs> no, I'm going to buy it. I want it. All right. Yeah. BTWMadison.com. Stick around. We will have more interviews coming up very soon. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.